Hello and welcome to this five minute demonstration from Cisco TAC, where we will be walking you through the steps to configure a RADIUS server on a 9800 controller. Please note, we will only be focusing on the 9800. Configuration on the RADIUS server will not be covered in this video. So let's start by heading to the GUI, then to configuration and under security, look for triple A. To begin, we must first configure the RADIUS server under Servers, click Add to add a RADIUS server and configure the correct information. This includes the name, the server address, RADIUS key, the authorization and accounting ports for which are a default of 1812 and 1813 respectively. Please keep in mind the support for COA or change of authorization, which is required for central web authentication. This is typically the same as the RADIUS key, but please take note of your RADIUS configuration to verify. Once configured, we can then click Apply. We must then add our RADIUS server to a RADIUS server group. This is done by selecting Server Groups, clicking Add, and configuring the group name and moving across our previously configured RADIUS server into the Assigned Servers list. Please note the Dead Time Configuration. This determines the duration of a RADIUS server which is marked as dead that remains as dead before it is attempted again. In later versions of iOS XE, the default is 5 minutes, meaning the RADIUS server will be marked as dead for 5 minutes before attempting to be used once more. When configuring multiple servers in a server group, it is important to take care when adding them in order. All RADIUS requests will be sent to the first server in the list until it is marked as dead, at which point the next server in the list will be used. It is possible to load balance across all servers within a group, but we will come to this later. Once we have our RADIUS server group configured, we need to add this group to an authentication method list, as it is this AAA authentication list which is applied to our WLAN. This is found under AAA method list, then authentication. Click add to create a new list, and after naming the list, select the group as .1x and the group type as group. As mentioned, it is the AAA authentication list which is applied to our WLAN, so navigate to the WLAN section under Tags and Profiles, then either select an existing WLAN or create a new one. After configuring 802.1x as your Layer 2 security, navigate to the AAA tab and select your previously configured authentication list. Should your RADIUS server be pushing any additional configurations such as VLANs or ACLs, as required for Central Web Auth, we need to enable AAA Override. This is done under the Policy Profile configuration, which is then tied to your WLAN via the Policy tag. Head to Policy, under Tags and Profiles, then after creating a new Policy Profile or selecting an existing one, click the Advanced tab, and under AAA Policy, enable the Allow AAA Override option. We have now successfully configured a RADIUS server for 802.1x authentication on one of our WLANs. Now, as I mentioned previously, it is possible to load balance across a number of RADIUS servers within a server group. However, in order to configure this, we must head to the CLI. Begin by entering global configuration mode, then specifying the server group then enabling load balancing with the command load balance method least outstanding. We can also configure load balancing globally across all server groups from global configuration mode with the command radius server load balance method least outstanding. We can use the command show triple A server to verify our connectivity and check for any radius servers marked as dead. For initial troubleshooting, check that you can ping the AAA server and verify your configuration with the command show run AAA. Further troubleshooting steps including checking the logs, taking RA traces of an 802.1x client, and if you are using Cisco ICE, you can use the live logs feature which will give you an in-depth look at the full 802.1x process. If you do require further assistance, please don't hesitate to contact Cisco TAC. Thank you for watching.